everyone and welcome back to another Top Tip Tuesday video from me, Sarah Amos, uh, from the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England. Um, and today's Top Tip Tuesday is making your own plaster moulds. So as a potter, um, we use moulds regularly in the studio um, and it just makes life a lot easier if you want to make uh, a set of something, so a set of mugs or a set of bowls, to actually have a mould template to do hand building from. So if you're not throwing on the wheel and you're hand building, then plaster moulds are a very good way of actually being able to reproduce the same shape over and over. And you've seen the um, hand built clay platter moulds that I use that were hand built with bisqueware, but today we're working with plaster. Um, so we're going to make some uh, moulds um, and I'm just going to show you the, uh, some of them are hump moulds and some of them are slump moulds and some of them are casting moulds. So various different um, uses for plaster moulds and when, you, when you're making plaster it's such a process, it's such a palaver and it goes everywhere and makes a right mess. So um, when I'm doing plaster moulds, I tend to make as many as I actually want to make rather than doing them in, in different um, sets because when you've got the plaster out, you just might as well make the mess once. Um, so this is just a little plastic jug, but actually the inside profile of this jug is actually quite nice and it would make, bearing in mind that your clay is going to shrink, it would make a nice hump mould to put either a little dish or a large perhaps um, hot chocolate mug or something like that. So I'm actually going to fill this jug with plaster to make a hump mould that we can then create over the top of. So that one's going to be a hump mould and as I say it's just a very cheap plastic um, measuring jug but the profile inside the jug is, is really nice and obviously it's smooth in there because all the markings are on the outside. Um, the second thing that I have is this, this glass dish. Now I wouldn't routinely suggest that you use glass um, to make a plaster mould um, because sometimes if, if the mould doesn't release then you do have to damage um, the item that you're making the mould with. But this particular um, glass dish came from the pound shop so I'm actually it I'm not too precious about it but if you happen to be using your mum's trifle bowl I don't suppose she'd be too happy if you then had to break the glass to get the mould out but if I do have to do that obviously I need to be extremely careful when I'm playing with broken glass so but I am going to use this one and again I'm going to use it in the same way as a hump mould so the plaster will be poured inside and then when we come to use the mould we will use it this way up and quite useful to have something that you can have um, either short, you know, cereal bowl sized bowls or maybe deeper bowls for plant pots. So that's actually a really nice shape um, to make a mould from. So that's what we're doing with that one. So we're going inside on that one. Um, this one, I've bought a cheap plastic um, mixing bowl. In fact, I have another one and I'll show it to you. Um, which only cost about a pound or just over a pound in the supermarket and it's just a plastic mixing bowl and it's flexible so it flexes just slightly um, and I'm just using it as the vessel for my casting. Um, I'm going to do some slip casting which again <laughs> I'll do in another video another time um, but I've, I've bought this plant pot so this is just a terracotta plant pot. Um, I wanted to have sort of a domed finish on the bottom of some mugs that I wanted to make. Um, so I've used some clay to just dome off the bottom of this plant pot. Um, and then I've put some elastic bands at the depth that I want it to sit in this bowl. Um, and then, I mean, it's all a bit Heath Robinson. I've then put the um, sticks on just to hold it, to suspend it so that it has a bottom of plaster inside the bowl. So this is going down into the bowl, but leaving about two inches at the bottom of the bowl where it will have plaster on it. So that's why that looks a bit odd, um, but that's the easiest way to suspend that pot 
over I'm not sure that you'll be able to see that on the camera but it, it is suspended in that bowl so you can see that there's going to be plaster underneath it and then I can use that mold for slip casting which is another another process as I say I'll go into at a different time so that's what we're going to do so we're using um, this uh, potter's plaster so it's it is slightly different um, in its chemical makeup to plaster that plasterers would put on the wall of a house um, and this is called I think it's Keram Keramicast why do they call these things funny names anyway I'll pop a picture up in the video just so that you can see what it is um, and this 25 gram uh, kilogram bag sack um, was 28 pounds so plaster's really cheap so you can make your own molds quite cheaply just by using whatever you happen to have around or buy very cheaply either in the pound shop or another place to look would be charity shops where you know if you if you sort of take your eye away from the fact that it's bright orange glass or bright orange plastic actually what you're looking for is the shape um, to make the mold out of um, so I'm going to I've measured out the water and the plaster and the um, the way to do that obviously is to put water into your vessel so however far up I want the plaster to go on here I shall know how much water I need because I've measured it already um, and again I have filled this with water measured the water so I know how much water I need now as I was saying about plaster plaster's not very nice stuff um, so in this bucket this is just an ordinary underneath here an ordinary bucket and I've put a black plastic bin liner into the bucket so when I get to the end of using this plaster the table is covered with newspaper and I won't have to wash my bucket out all I will need to do is take the liner out of the bucket and all the over the residue of the plaster will still be in that bag and I will just put the bag in the middle of the newspaper roll the whole lot of newspaper up and get rid of the whole lot um, because what you don't want to do is be washing things with plaster on them into the sink not nice stuff so it probably would clog your sink if you were not careful um, the other thing to say is obviously plaster dust very nasty stuff don't put yourself at risk so when I come to mixing this in a moment I am going to put my um, this is just a DIY dust mask um, which I've put a scarf on because I find it easier to tie it round the back of my head when it has a, when it has, has um, a scarf on it and I'm using long rubber gloves so instead of using you know sort of latex inspection um, gloves which would only come up to your wrist I'm using these long um, rubber gloves uh, that you can buy which you would normally do your washing up with so they're nice they're nice thick gloves so I'm just going to pop those on I'm going to pop my mask on and then what I'm going to do is I've measured out the ratio of water to plaster and the ratio to, from of water to plaster is 100% water to 56% plaster so it's almost double plaster to water so in the bucket um, there's three litres of water and in the um, bowls here I've measured out the plaster so there are six litres of plaster so I've just used a jug I've measured the water which this is a, a, a litre jug I've measured the water in the jug and then I've measured the plaster in the jug so like you would um, with cooking using a cup I've, I've measured the plaster in this jug so I know that it's the same um, the mixing time for this plaster is two to four minutes so once I've actually got the plaster in the water, I need to mix it with my hand in the glove for two to four minutes to mix it. And then um, you have to work quite quickly with plaster because the setting time for this plaster is 12 minutes. So you haven't got long to mess about. You really do need to think about what you're doing, have absolutely everything ready before you start. Um, the other thing to say before I do do that is that I have put um, a release agent on my moulds so in this case I'm using um, fairy liquid or washing up liquid liquid that you use for your dishes and I have 
poured it into the mould, I've used a sponge and I have made sure that there is an extremely good coat. In fact, I did two or three coats um, of this just by moving the sponge through, making sure that it's absolutely covered. So I did it once yesterday, um, I've done it once this morning um, and then I've done it again once it's dried. So I've got a really good layer of washing up liquid to as a releasing agent on each of my pieces that I'm using. So when I come to actually wanting to get the mould out, I should just be able to flex the mould and, and the plaster will fall out. Well, that's the plan. We shall see what happens, shall we? Anyway, let's get on with it. So I'm going to put my mask on. I'll whiz through on the video over some of this so that we're not um, taking up your time watching me mix plaster for four minutes. Anyway, I'll see you on the other side. So now that I've got all the plaster into the water, obviously there's no dust now, so I can um, move my mask. And I'm just using my hand, I'm trying not to create too many bubbles in the water, because what you don't really want are bubbles in your mould. Um, so I'm just using my hand and just smoothing through this plaster to make sure that there are no great big lumps of plaster in this mix and actually it's really nice and smooth it's like um it's like putting your hand into cream so that's the kind of consistency that it is and as i say i'm trying not to make too many bubbles in this in here because i don't want the bubbles in my mold and i've just kept my eye on the clock um, for the mixing time of two to four minutes, I'm getting right down into the bottom of this bucket to make sure that there are no lumpy bits right at the bottom of this mix. So I've just got a minute or so more mixing to do. So again, I'll fast forward that for you. Okay, so that's our mixing time done. So the plaster is now all mixed and it's ready for pouring. I've um, found the spout on this bucket. I don't, what I don't really want to do is transfer it into another container. I want to be able to pour it straight out from the bucket into the moulds. So I'm going to do this jug first because obviously there's quite a lot of plaster in here. So I'm going to pour it slowly and steadily and try not to get any bubbles in it. Um, because that's what we don't want in a plaster mould. So I'm going to fill this up to where I want it, just to the neck of that, the lip of the jug. And then I don't really want to move this, but I'm just going to give it a tiny shake, um, just to get any bubbles that are further down up onto the surface of the plaster. And then I'm going to leave that because I don't want to, um, to move it whilst it's actually setting. So this one, I'm just going to pour the plaster down the side of the um, mould between the sticks. This one will take obviously a lot more plaster. I'm going to bring it up as high as I can get it so that it gives me more options for the mould and then the mould moves. Right, so that just needs to be... There you go, that's fine. I might just put a tiny bit more in there if I can get it in. Just to bring that level up a little bit more. Might make that fall again, yes it will. Okay, so I'm just making sure. It's probably doing that because it's quite light. So if I put that inside, it'll weight it down. There we are. 
Okay, so I've just made sure that that's at the level that I want it to be, bearing in mind that it's going to have that much of the bottom of the mould uh, that will be plaster. So I want to use it for casting. So I'm actually just going to try and get, if I can, a little bit more in there. There we are. Okay, so that's nearly now up to the top of the mould. And then this is the last piece, the glass dish. And as you can see, I probably just about got enough plaster to pop that in there. Quite nicely measured. Um, so if you're careful with your measuring, actually there's a, there's a loop in there. I can get, just get a bit more out. Careful with your measuring, then you won't make up too much um, plaster that you're not going to use. You don't really want to waste it. It doesn't matter, obviously, if you make up too much plaster, just leave it in the bag in the bucket and then it will all get to go after that. I'm just taking out the very last dregs of what's in this bucket, which is very nicely just about filled this mould. There's probably half a centimetre that's not actually um, got plaster in it, but I'm, I'm not too worried about that. There is just, actually, there is just a little bit more in the bucket, so I'll just drain that out. Make it a bit higher on the mould. There we are, that will do. Okay, so um, that's all of the uh, mixed plaster. Um, obviously, I've got plaster all over this hand, so I'm just going to get rid of this glove. And as I said earlier, I'm going to put it straight into the bucket with the rest of the plaster stuff so that, so that we can just keep all the plaster in one place, really, because I don't really want it going anywhere else. Um, so now these moulds need to set, and the setting time stated on the um, bag is 12 minutes. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not trusting it to 12 minutes, so we'll see how long it takes for them to, um, to set. And then once they're set, I'll do another piece just to show you um, releasing, etc., so that we can get them out of the moulds. So that's all for now. We'll just leave these to dry and come back to them in a moment. So it is about uh, 20 minutes since I poured the plaster into the moulds and actually as you can see it has set so it really does not take very much time at all but of course the proof of the pudding is in the eating as the uh, saying goes and now my task is to get these plaster moulds out of their vessels um, and that's usually the most difficult part. And indeed, I can already tell I might have trouble with this one. So I'm going to try pushing it from the base. And actually, it has come out, it has released, but it has left a little bit of residue on the uh, side of the mould. So I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do on there to make that um, smooth so that when we're using it as a hump mould, it will be smooth. Um, so I've just got myself a damp cloth and um, this actually is marking with my, with my gloves. So I think it's probably just not quite dry. Um, but as that is the case, I'm just going to smooth out um, the bits that are sticking up on the mould so that it makes a nice smooth surface for us to then hand build on. So I'm just very gently wiping it with a damp cloth all the way round and indeed it isn't quite dry because you can see that it's just taking an imprint of my glove. So I'm going to leave the other moulds for a few minutes longer, clean this mould up in the interim period because whilst the plaster is still not completely set, 
I can just make sure that this mould is smooth so that it's smooth for me to use. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to leave the others in their mould for another sort of 10 minutes or so and then we'll see where we are with those. So join me in a moment. So I've had time to make a cup of coffee, one of my favourite mugs. Don't we love that as potters, making our own mugs? So cheers. Mmm. Need the caffeine to keep us going. Right, so um, I've un, um, cleaned up this um, mould that came out of the jug and it will need a little bit of sanding because actually it was probably just a, a little bit too early to release it from the mould. Um, and I've just cleaned it up um, and then I'll just run some sandpaper over that wearing a mask um, just to make that nice and smooth. But as you can see, the shape of it is is really nice it's a nice shape for a mug because by the time you've got your 15 17 percent shrinkage from biscuit firing and glaze firing that actually would make quite a nice mug size so that's the first of the molds and i've just popped it onto a piece of foam and all the bits that have come off of there i'm just tapping them into the bucket which still has the liner in it so all the plaster dust all the plaster chips and everything are going into that bag because I definitely do not want to contaminate anything that is clay with plaster. If you do, it will explode in the kiln. So when you're using plaster moulds with clay, always use a wooden tool, not a metal tool. Um, when you're cutting against a plaster mould, um, do make sure that you use wooden tools. OK, so that is that one. As I say, I've left it about another sort of 10 or 15 minutes um, and I've taken off the, um, the, the wood on this one because obviously I don't need it any longer. And I'm just going to see if this um, plant pot is going to lift, which it has. Now, what it's done is it's left the clay in the bottom of the mould. Um, there was a you know a hole in the mould and I just made it slightly domed so I'm getting rid of the clay because um, I can't use that clay again because it's been contaminated with plaster as I was saying so um, in the bottom of this mould is that is that clay dome here um, which I can just remove um, if I grab a wooden tool let me see if we can get that out relatively easily if it will come it just is that I shall just have to dig that out of there um, carefully to try and get the clay to release from the plaster it will come off no problem at all um, so then I'll be left with a a hole in here which I can cast with casting slip um, and I'm just going to pop this one out if I can get it out she says hopefully used enough of the fairy liquid and because these pots are flexible, they're actually very easy to just pop out like you would with a jelly, almost like a jelly mould. And this one has released much more cleanly. As you can see, um, there's no plaster on that mould. So it has dried a bit more than the first one that we turned out. Um, and again, I'm just going to pop it onto a piece of foam because I don't want to damage the surface of this mould because obviously the surface of the mould is what we want to use um, when we come to making whatever because this is a double mold you could use it for casting on this side and then you could make, use this side for bowl making so actually really useful in the studio so i'm just going to pop a piece of foam on there while i turn it over onto the whirler um, and then cleaning up the molds obviously they're a little bit messy when they first turn out of the um, mould itself, she says, trying to find the, there it is. Um, I've just got a little um, shore form or surf form. Some people call them surf forms. Some people call them shore forms. Uh, a shore form grater. And I'm just going to just take off the edge on this, where it's popped out of the mould. And it's, it's not sharp, sharp, but it's a little bit, a little bit sharp. And it would just be better if I've just put a slight bevel on that edge and again I'm doing this on top of the newspaper which is all going to get wrapped up and put into that black bin liner so that I've got all 
the plaster residue in one place. Okay, so I'm just running the shore form round, just taking off the, the edge of that. Okay, and then again on the inside edge here, it's just a tiny, tiny bit rough. And I'm going to go over the surface this time rather than taking it from the edge um, because I don't want to damage that edge for when I'm casting. So I'm just going round, just taking off. There's a tiny, almost half a millimetre um, standing proud on that edge. So I just want to smooth that down so that it gives me a nice crisp edge to cast up to. I mean, obviously when you're casting, you, you refine the edges, the top edges anyway, but I just want to just get that off of there. Um, and the time to do that is now while the plaster is still um, workable because once it actually dries, which will take mm, some days, um, depending on the weather, but um, plaster moulds do take quite a long time to, to dry out um, before you use them for the first time. So um, the time to do this is now. So I've just rubbed that edge, just smoothing it with my glove, trying not to go into the profile inside too much. Um, and later on, when this has dried a little bit more, it's a little bit delicate now, um, I will uh, take that clay out of the bottom of there. So I don't want to do it while the mould is still um, still drying. So that clay will pop out of there and, and then I can just dispose of it so that it's not going back into my clay storage. So that, um, as I say, that mould will be really useful because I can use it for both casting and you could cast um, a mug there and then put a handle on it. Um, or indeed you could use it as a hump mould and use it for making perhaps a slightly larger pasta dish or similar. So when you're using moulds, just think about the shape um, and then you can use them for slab work really easily. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm just going to spend a little bit more time in a moment just going through and undoing the rest of these um, and I'll pop a little picture on the end of them when they're all nicely cleaned up and they all look um, finished. So um, that's plaster mould making for you. It's a filthy business and as I say you just end up with a table that's covered in plaster so do be careful not to get the plaster near your clay or anything that you have made or are making with clay um, because plaster does not um, interface with clay terribly well and if it gets into your clay it will explode in the kiln so do be careful right so that's your lot for this week's top tip tuesday as ever have a look at the website do have a look in the etsy shop the link is in the description below Anyway, it's nice to have you along as ever. Thank you for watching. Um, do comment and let me know if you have a go. It's really simple to do and it really will help you if you're trying to make multiples to have a mould that you can then use over and over. And obviously in the studio environment for me, the students can make lots of different things quite easily from slabs. So bless you for watching. Thanks very much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.